Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good morning. <laughs> so I hope you guys, everybody is safe. And we are excited to, you know, be here to share different people and their experience over here from different parts of the world, talking about different subjects. Yeah. And our journey started maybe a decade ago. It's almost 11 years now, right, Hermi? And we started this organization six years ago. The whole idea was to use photography and art as a medium to communicate with uh, like-minded people. In fact, to bring more people closer to nature was the whole intention. In this journey, so far, we have done 34 plus, um, what do you call it? 34 plus magazines, two different magazines, two coffee table books, uh, 60 plus international workshops. We have worked with 200 and 200 plus photographers from across the world. And last two months, because, and I think, how many exhibitions had me? 15, 16? Uh, I'm not able to hear you. We have done 24 exhibitions. Yeah, 24 exhibitions. So I kind of lost the count. And we are starting with, uh, we have started with, in fact, online exhibition, online live review. So we are trying to do everything possible from our side to uh, create a new community, which is more eco-friendly. People who really want to get connect with nature, who, who really want to uh, use photography and art as a medium. So that's the journey what, where we are. At the plan and right now, we want to learn as well. Yes, teach, learn from each other, and share our experience and bring yeah. more and more people closer to nature. On that note, today we have an amazing, amazing young photographer from India who is who got a, a great experience from India as well as Africa, but he's going to talk more on the Indian side. Now, the, the fabulous spectacular Nimit Pirdi. We have known him for almost now five years, I guess. Yes. And he is a very good friend. He, he I should say, is a very wildlife enthusiast who yes. always wanted to be in the nature. I don't know how he is uh, surviving uh, this time. <laughs> the concrete jungle from last <laughs> three, four months uh, after the COVID happened. So yeah, uh, very uh, enthusiastic wildlife photographer and a natural lover. Let us Welcome. bring. Hi Nimit. Hi guys. Hi Hermes. Hi Nisha. To correct you guys, I know you for more than six years before you guys. Are <laughs> 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 meetings. <laughs> Just joking. Anyway, like what you said. Thank you for inviting me on your webinar. I mean, Misha calling me at 11.30 at night, Indian time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you uh, know. No worries, no worries. But I, it's great to get an opportunity to talk online. And uh, as you guys mentioned, uh, many people who you've invited have spoken about Africa. Well, I'd love to talk about Africa as well, because there's no dirt. I understand. Uh, but I'll talk about India, because that's where we started, mostly, yeah. uh, photography. Uh, so just to give a little bit of introduction about myself, yeah. Uh, my name is Nimit Vrithi. I am born and brought up from the Nilgiris, as, uh, Wellington, for people who know the Nilgiris. Uh, I have been, you know, we are surrounded by wildlife throughout the year. I have resident black panthers behind my in my backyard. I've got leopards, tigers coming into the Kono market sometimes here and there. Now. We have uh, domestic uh, gore, which are running through our fields now, through our tea fields. So from a young age, I'm into wildlife and photography was because of my grandfather. So, and it's been more than a decade now that I've uh, pursued wildlife photography as a hobby. And it's been six years almost since I've turned it into, kind of turned it into a profession where I take people across uh, India on wildlife safaris as well as Kenya. Yeah. Now, recent being said, COVID is a very bad time. Yes, there's no travel. Uh, we are stuck in the concrete jungle going mad, mm -hmm. going nuts. You can imagine. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't even go out on... Uh, uh, tracks or whatever so so on the safari part but something great has come out of this covert experience for me personally mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. i am kind of shifting my base away from india and wow. moving, moving to the Ma masai mara that's uh, great i think when, so when, when the Indian government opens up the flights so, uh, <laughs> I, I, know, so so. Seven. Yeah. I know that is always what you wanted <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I've been striving for that for many years. Thanks to my uh, close friend and part owner of uh, the camps, which I'm representing there, uh, Smart Agent Safari Camps, and we have some other different aspects as well. Plus, I know your Malaika camp as well, John, quite well. We keep bumping it to each other in the morning. <laughs> I remember when we were there as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, so anyway, uh, that's going a little bit off topic. So that's uh, the gist about me. Yeah. Uh, I'm here today to talk about my personal experience about uh, wildlife across India. Okay. So just let me head to the slide. Yeah. So basically, India and Africa are completely uh, completely opposite uh, to each other in terms of the experience. Uh, Africa is a little bit on the easier side, but more expensive. Uh, there's no stress about bookings, but across India, it's a little bit uh, tedious task if you don't know what you're doing. Oh, you're going through an agent. I mean, that's direct and easy. You say that the agent what you want and you carry on. So how I categorize uh, safaris in India is Karnataka as one because Tamil Nadu and Kerala don't have safaris per se. Uh, it is usually a trek or you have game uh, small safaris which they take you on small routes and you go. Uh, Karnataka is predominantly, you know, Kabani, which is uh, quite famous across the world now because of the Black Panther. Yeah. But uh, it's usually known as a land of leopards. And now in the recent years, we've got a lot of tigers coming in. So we see both equal number of tigers and leopards. Otherwise, before it was like, used to see tigers uh, very uh, rarely, like how the Black Panther was. So something on that sort. And Karnataka, I'll tell you the advantages and disadvantages of each uh, park. So let's start with, uh, uh, see, predominantly is three, Karnataka, Central and North India, and special. Special safaris are basically the safari, I mean, uh, tours which you go for the snow leopard or you go for the red panda or anything that doesn't involve a safari jeep and which is quite difficult, which mean people don't know about. So let this go welcome us. Like I told you, we have a lot of uh, urban cattle in our fields, which I'll show you later on in the presentation, how they coexist with us. So generally safaris, how do people do safaris in India? People uh, usually tend to say it as Jeep safari, which people go like in uh, Karnataka, we have the Mahindra by Bolero Vikers uh, or the Camper Vikers, which are converted into safari vehicles, which is predominantly run by jungle lodges and uh, resorts across Karnataka. And they are the only auth uh, authorized people to take their own safari Jeeps into the vehicle. Even if you're staying in other lodges, you stay, you have to come to them and then go for safaris. Now they offer, now this picture is from Kabini where you have Jeep safaris and you have boat safaris as well. Uh, there is a misconception here where they say you get to, uh, to see sightings only in Jeep safari. Well, most of the time it's true. But in this case, if you see except from the uh, from this image as an example, when people are on boat safaris, you can see they have an elephant right on the other side of the bank. And look what's sitting right in front of them, a tiger basking on the banks of the Kabini River. I, on, on this safari, nobody on the Jeep safari had seen a tiger. Well, but the boat guys had the tiger all to themselves throughout the entire safari. So it's a it's a win-win and a lose-lose situation as well. So safaris cannot, these are wild animals. You don't know, you can't predict them. So go on that focus. Another thing I wanted to mention here is my safari is predominantly going to be a lot of tigers because Indian safaris are, it's cliched with being a tiger safari. Please bear with me on that. But I will show you other species as well. So this is again Kabini on my most recent trip, which I had gone thanks to a few friends who invited me on the trip. Uh, this is a mother with uh, three of her cubs. And uh, Kabini seeing photos like this in the past was quite different. And the advantage of doing a safari in Karnataka, I must mention over here, is they're open throughout the year. So they're not seasonal. They don't close up or anything. And uh, the best person, as I mentioned before, to book through is, is the jungle lodges and resorts. You can go through other places as well, like Shaz's place, the bison and all, where he personally guides you and, I mean, he would be the best person to go with if you uh, want to go behind the Black Panther. So Kabini is usually cliched like this with a leopard on the tree. Well, for me, in my case, I never got the uh, far off leopard on the tree, but I get them sitting like this or quite close or on the road. Uh, Kabini, I mean, like uh, Indian wildlife, uh, you don't predominantly, we all go for the big cats. But over here, we can see a juvenile crested hawk eagle with the barbed kill. You can make some unique frames, which you don't get across I mean, if you're comparing it to Africa, because I can talk on both places um, based on my experience. But you get a plethora of wildlife, uh, birds, fauna and flora, landscapes, a lot of things you can do on Indian safaris. Now in Karnataka, which I'm basically focused now, is, I mean, again, 
who says you can't get a tiger like this uh, in the south indian jungles well i proved them wrong many people have proved them wrong you get tigers like that it just depends on your luck and the way your guide uh, or you do the tracking what's foreseen in your safari for that day we even get very uh, peculiar frames now basically all across india uh, there is uh, i mean i don't know if other people have experiences but what i've experienced is i usually see female tigers or female big cats across uh, central and north india as well in south india i usually encounter big males now this guy is known as prince who was quite famous across bandipur where he covered uh, territories all in, all the way into mudumalai as well um, i mean this was taken few months before his untimely and unfair demise but then again so some precious moments to share with these beautiful big cats of india this is another frame from a recent from from kabini now while you're doing on safaris positioning is a little bit challenging but in places like kabini or uh, south india where the terrains are hilly you can position your jeeps in such a way that you come on high level with the animal but again you should you have to create a rapport with your uh, what do you say with your driver and uh, it's a little bit difficult in south india because in karnataka because you're sharing the jeep with other people you can't take your own personal jeep like how we do it in central and uh, north india monsoon seasons are a great time as well now usually during these times the parks across india are shut but kabini karnataka is completely wide open and kabini and bandipur are the places to be this is again prints taken from bandipur during the monsoon season and uh, he gave us i mean like this is for the whole day so morning and evening side uh, safari he was just sitting in this in this water hole and it rain you can see you get you get various uh, types of frames over here you get the droplets you get to see his muscular frame as well i mean this is one of my most precious and i would say my best tiger safari is from bandipur my best tiger sighting from bandipur sorry you get to create unique images as well of common subjects like this mother gaur and her calf and uh, most often when you're on safaris yes we do see a lot of crested serpent eagles crested hawk eagles but then again you should not ignore these common aspects which i'll tell you throughout the presentation as well because you get to get some i mean some unique instances like for instance this juvenile crested serpent eagle was sick uh, was sitting uh, quite perched and yawning away i mean calling away so we were on safari and uh, we never expected it to pounce down so when we approached closer it just came down on the i mean on the road side safari track side we stopped in our tracks to see what was going on we heard a loud squeal when it landed so we thought maybe it's caught something or whatever when it took off we found out it had a baby black napped hare as its prey again seasonal uh, being uh, i mean getting the advantage of going through the entire seasons where the park is not closed you get some nice autumn frames as well with uh, beautiful colors so this is a crested hawk eagle which is a which is an adult the previous the first frame which i showed you was a juvenile again another common subject but doing something which we never expected it landed again next to us it was uh, trotting along or hopping along the forest floor when it picked up the scorpion and i mean my, to tell you the truth my camera was literally packed i saw it lifting up the scorpion and in a rush i when we started to open up our cameras to take this uh, frame and i uh, my lens hood fell down on the safari track which is not good you be ready and must make most of the opportunity some lessons which i'm learning again these are my experiences again uh, this was on the banks of kabini so we were going i mean after the safari we just drive around some dams and all that this great comment had come you know the dive inside be ready to where they are they come out with a fish and all that you must have seen many people get these types of frame especially from bird centuries like bharatpur and all these other places as well a uh, few places like see apart from safaris you can visit bird centuries across india as well so this is taken from ranganathi to bird century which is between mysore and uh, I many after mysore when you go towards kabini or the or the highway so there's a diversion for ranganathi you can go they are it's quite famous for pelicans coming down swooping and taking water we get a lot of bird activities also there so safaris is not the only one where you can go you can go to bird centuries as well these are these would categories themselves as a boat safari because you can go on the boat and do it where there are other animals across the indian uh, i mean mother nature's creatures something like this dole another encounter from Band a special encounter from bandipur where i had seen the dole take down this deer in fact the deer was still alive and this dole was still trying to choke it to death 
and those are the only animals which uh, eat their prey alive or oh, wild dogs per se even in africa the painted dogs they do the same thing they eat their prey alive and luckily lucky for the deer the this uh, alpha male over there had come and taken it down and finished it otherwise it would have been gruesome imagine somebody eating you alive another night critter which is predominantly a night uh, animal this indian sloth bear uh also i would say this is the most dangerous animal uh, you have to meet face to face because these guys attack and you know it's there in the news you've seen the whatsapp videos but again it's because we are invading their territory it's got nothing to do with us we, it's all our fault but then again you get to get some creative frames of uh, sloth bear this is again taken from kabini uh, which was among the most boldest sloth bear i've ever seen i have been attacked by sloth bear while in a safari vehicle and bandipur which is uh, crazy but then you have to understand your limit and keep your distance unless they come walking close to you that on that case you can't do anything much it again stood up you know balu the bears dance where it uh, stands up and scratches i mean some beautiful frames of the bear from there this was for my recent trip so again doing safaris in india is not only about the tigers or the big cats you get some beautiful animals like the sloth bear uh, underappreciated animals like the spotted deer because we see them very commonly which i'll show you some unique uh, unique frame which i put that also in the presentation now another big cat which we all love across the globe i won't say india alone is the leopard the most versatile of cats they survive they are most adaptable anywhere and uh, this was taken on uh, i mean we had just left a tiger sighting uh, in fact the same image which nisha and uh, harmesh have been sharing on my uh, poster after that tiger sighting when we came the rains hit and the light was getting dull we came back and we saw a leopard now over here i like to point out something while on safari and especially in india we have only a small track uh, to focus on where the animal or the small open area because our jungles are dense uh, apart from few places like ranthambore or the grasslands which are there but again uh, you have to be prepared keep your eyes open keep your eyes peeled try to understand your environment because this leopard walked on from here now this many of the safari jeeps had missed the leopard is sitting there right on the perch right in the open but the camouflage the way he blended after this tree he got down and that's how uh, i mean he walked he walked right straight towards us crossed in front of a jeep and went i mean another moment I mean, you have to pay attention while in india now i usually say this uh, when you're photographing in india when you learn to photograph in india you are technically more uh, experienced when you go to places like africa where it's quite predominantly easy to photograph the animals there another photograph from kabini where we followed a different leopard this was in the other zone of kabini now again in india is completely different is because we have zone systems now in kabini we have two zones zone a and b we have the main road running through the one with the backwaters is zone b and the one with the jungle is zone a and uh, this was taken in zone b which is the plantation eucalyptus plantation and everything you learn to track the sounds of uh, jungle like a langur call or the animal a hubby was making a distress call that's how you track the big cats you see the pug marks on the street that's how you follow you know the direction which they're going or you follow the langur's calls or they're going when you're looking when when you're waiting on the safari you look at the langurs where where they're looking at and making out calls or on average the most number of langurs looking at particular direction you're sure to find a predator maybe a big cat but usually um, i mean langurs are for big cats uh, wild dogs yeah happens but you know when a langur or a spotted deer is calling it's some big cat around the area so this is another frame from the plantation side uh people were standing right in front for uh, they've seen this leopard sitting on the tree they couldn't get a proper angle you move on oh some people uh, i mean like because you're sharing the jeep and a disadvantage over here with uh, karnataka safaris is you're sharing the jeep with people you don't have your own jeep so when you're sharing the jeep with other people who are not photographers they get very agitated and very angry and they have to move on let's go let's go the leopard's not doing anything or the tiger's not here or tiger's not doing anything and they move on so the advantage for me on this vehicle was the people who were sharing the vehicle with me were photographers so we waited it out and by, i mean the frame says it all this uh, frame had got a little bit viral in the beginning when I, this was somewhere around 2013 uh, that's when i got this photo so again camouflage it's a big part in indian safaris keep your eyes peeled because you never know what type of frame uh, you might get or what opportunities you might get this uh, sighting yielded a frame which i always wanted which i had seen many people getting it from kabini 
again kabini why it's a land of leopards that's why so this was a mother she was sitting on the tree and one of the guides saw the tail hanging down and said it's a leopard 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 so we all waited there we saw the leopard i mean two jeeps had already crossed by and gone we had, they turned they saw us uh, stopping over there and think they turned around and came back so this mother was there with a little cub her cub jumped down i mean like just fell from top to down uh, so that startled everybody but then she started looking at us and she was curious about a cub she, she had to come down we knew it we waited it out and then we got the frame what we wanted she climbed down she stood there stared at us then went into the undergrowth i mean patience and knowing a little bit about your subject especially in india pays all that as much because we have a very limited amount of time to photograph these guys another prime example of kabni land or leopards getting a leopard walking straight towards you or what we indians like to call head on well this is um, the beautiful ton tonia who's a rival to the black panther and uh, well that's uh, this is a little bit of a video i wanted to share with you guys of that sighting and how when you know and understand the animal you can position yourselves and they are very much comfortable with you i had shared this on my cover photos or cover page on facebook as well for many of you have seen so this is part of that sighting we were lucky to be the only vehicles there for a change otherwise usually we are the last now this is one advantage of being in a safari in uh, south Af uh, in south india especially karnataka is because we have less number of vehicles coming to the forest so you don't get that much of disturbance when compared to the other parts in india now here comes his cousin the black panther it's it's a normal indian leopard but has got the uh, uh, recessive gene which makes its entire fur look black so usually this is the way i see the black panther but on rare occasions he does come up but uh, take talking about the black panther i would like to talk about my first ever sighting which was in november 2017 where we encountered the black panther on one, on a misty morning and again my luck is getting him always in low light or in difficult situations or something like that but apart from the recent trip which was which i had done in february which i will share a single frame with you guys on that so this we met the black panther on uh, in zone a next to tiger tank and uh, i mean we never expected to see anything early morning we had just started a safari so we went there we were no sound from the jungle nothing we were strolling around and when we reached this junction over here we saw something black moving and oh my god imagine seeing the black panther for the first time in the wild especially in a wild on safari it was really crazy i had seen that at home multiple times i mean from my window not but then again that's just a black cat which runs away we assume but then it's crazy still now when you see a black panther it's the same i would say a better feeling than seeing a tiger so he came walked towards us through the bushes i mean he was he was looking around for something we didn't know what and uh, we were so focused on the black panther that we didn't rea and we neglected to see our surroundings of a jeep so when the black panther went a little bit inside the bush uh, we started the, the our driver started the jeep and right from next to our tire on the right side a leopard a leopardess got up and ran straight into the bush imagine we are all seeing the black panther where with your mobile phone you can take a full frame photo of a leopard we missed that so you see the priorities which one get in the, i mean once we get we want the black panther it's only the black panther we don't see anything else around us so this was the leopardess which we had missed she climbed up a tree and she was the mate of the black panther at that time this was in november 2017 so they crossed again and uh, he gave us a small i mean a slight look which i would say is my clearest photo of him and then he bolted into the bush for the day so this is another photo of him where i have taken uh, it during the day i mean uh, during my recent uh, trip to kabini and uh, when people usually see a black panther moving everybody wants to just rush to the as close as possible to the black panther to take a photo well you are scaring the animal so when we were going there uh, my friends and i we agreed i mean like we immediately told the driver please stop 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 we stopped we positioned i mean like because in a moving vehicle carrying a 600 or a big lens you move a lot you're not able to photograph and especially photographing a black cat you're not going to get him clear so luckily we had stopped the black panther came and the other vehicles kept on going which gave it gave us an opportunity as the black panther was quite curious as to who are uh, following him he turned gave us a look and then moved on into the bush it's just glimpses we get of him so uh, again it's not all about the big cats alone uh, we have this gorgeous tusker which was taken from nagaroli uh, park which is the same park as kabini but kabini being next to mysore 
uh, this uh, part of the forest is next to Kur, is on the Kur side. So we were on safari there. You get to see a lot of those beautiful animals. Now, again, when you're on safari in India, learn to experiment. Uh, we always usually take photos like this. Try to take different photos to show depth of scale or the height of the animal in respect to its environment. Now, this is a full grown tusker. Can you imagine it being so, can you imagine it being dwarfed like this when the forest is so massive and huge? Mother Nature surely is wonderful. So that's enough of uh, Karnataka. And I can keep talking more and more, but I have to constrain myself because India is close to my heart and I love the wildlife of India. Uh, let's talk about Central and North India. Now, uh, there are certain advantages and disadvantages to North India. Uh, basically, the most disadvantageous thing in uh, Central and North India is the parks are closed during the monsoon season. So from July, uh, from 1st of July to 30th of uh, September, the parks are closed. They open only after that. And certain parks like Kaziranga or Corbett, they open a little bit later in November or December. In Kaziranga, again, because of the floods, we have to wait and see. Here the advantage is, uh, now let me uh, do a little bit comparison over here. Uh, now the when you're doing a safari in Karnataka, the disadvantage over there would be one, it's too expensive for what you get. Yes, you want if you get the Black Panther and all, wonderful. Let's pass our soul. Agreed. Go ahead. But then again, um, it's too expensive if you're not going to see anything. And most of the cases, wildlife safaris are like that. It's not like you go and we get these beautiful images in one safari or two safaris. No, these uh, these images are a collaboration of hundreds of safaris which we've done. And maybe on one safari for a split, for five seconds, we get the animal, we take the shot. Yeah, we got the shot, successful safari. That's how we call it. So you have to be a little bit reserved when you're doing a safari in India. It's not that easy. And especially when compared to Africa. Now, uh, there are uh, something to note here. Safaris in Karnataka have... Um, the forest department has levied a lens charge, which is really absurd according to me. And the reason why they said is they don't want wildlife photographers to come and hold the animals. Well, my point on this, I would like to point out, we have big lenses. We want to stay away from the animal. Why do we have to go close? And what we're going to take of the animal with the big lenses? Because the larger the lens, the more expensive you have to pay. The prices range from 200 rupees per lens per safari to all the way to 600 rupees per lens per safari. I don't understand that, but I hope so. whoever is seeing it can convey the message and help us with that. Uh, you again, another disadvantage, you're sharing the safari jeep. You don't have your own safari, so you have to be courteous to your fellow safari goers in the jeep. You don't have enough of time. Again, speaking about time, you get to do We also have a question from one of the uh, viewers, Sumit Day. Uh, okay. Sir, can you describe the pro procedure to do a safari in company? So, right. you, yeah. I didn't get you. You want to know how to do a safari in Kabani? Yeah, so maybe they want to know how to do a uh, safari, the, the procedure to do a safari in Kabani. Yeah, like in the beginning, I had mentioned uh, doing a safari in Kabani or in Karnataka, you have to go through, I mean, the most easiest and the most comfortable way to do it is to go through jungle lodges and resorts. They have their website online. If you Google them, you will get them. And when you book online, you get around 5% off on their basic uh, cost. But uh, they, so what happens is when you book, over there, it is per person based and on double sharing. So per person, that includes two safaris. Uh, one Now the rule is they made one safari, you have to go by Jeep, one safari, you have to take the boat. But again, see you see my point. So you have to talk to the guys over there. And all the meals included, the full board. It's on full board basis and it's per person basis. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter whether three people or 10 people are sharing a room. They're going to charge you per person basis. Okay. So jungle lodges and uh, resorts are the best uh, guys to go with because it's a one-shot payment. Everything is included in that. Or on the other hand, you can stay in other premium properties like Orange County or the Bison. But then again, to do the safaris, they bring you all the way to Kabani River Lodge, in, which is in Kabani, which is Jungle Lodges' property. You come mm -hmm. there, they give you the canter. You have to sit in the canter and then go. The third option is you go with the forest department. Again, you're uh, sharing the, you're, they're going to send you in a canter with the, the local crowd where people just come for a daytime trip. It's a one hour safari and go. When you're staying with jungle lodges, you have around two, two and a half hours safari in the morning and two to around two hours safari only in the evening. So that's around four and a half hours of safari in the whole day. When okay. compared to Central and North India's eight hours safari a day. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the comparisons which I would like to point out. I hope that answers your question. 
Yeah, and he got one more question. How to focus on a Black Panther in shade to get perfect exposure? That's a real tricky thing because to get the Black Panther even in uh, proper light is very tricky because there's no... How I mean, how do our cameras focus based on contrast, based on a difference between the dark and the light? It focuses on that point. Now, a Black Panther being a black cat, what is the brightest area of the cat? The eyes. Focus on the eyes. That's it. Or focus on some contrast. Like if suppose if it's pause on the uh, in the light or something. I mean, you have to learn and experiment. The only way to do is increase the ISO to a bit which you have, you have to know your gear again. Increase the ISO. You play around with exposure compensation. And you have to keep trying it. It's a lot of hit and miss. But once you get, you can practice on your local domestic black cat. That's how I did it. I have some photos of the local black cats going around here before I went in uh, targeted the black panther. Now again, when you go for the black panther, usually we don't get the black panther. When we uh, usually it appears when we are leaving the safari, when we come back home, oh the next safari they've seen the black panther. <laughs> yeah. usually, the wildlife is like that in India. You can't help yeah. it. I mean, I know I'm not alone when I say this that uh, wildlife teases us, wildlife photographers. People with yeah. mobile phones get to get the best of the best shot of the big cats, <laughs> even the Black Panther. But when we go with our gear ready, okay, we've practiced for the Black Panther, you go there, he doesn't show up. So, I mean, it's crazy. You either the only way to see the Black Panther if you're a photographer is to go like Shaz. I mean, get a team with Nat Geo, go around with them, explore the whole <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say. But again, it's based on luck. So on a serious note, uh, never gave up on Indian wildlife. They are beautiful creatures. And trust me, it's worth it once you get the frame. The amount of time you spent. Yeah. I mean, it shows. Patience pays, always. Okay, let's go to the next session. All right. So uh, talking about Central and North India, the usual cliches are tigers in the open. Again, I said you it's a tiger-centric presentation, but I'll show you some other animals. But we usually get uh, see certain parts in central North India, central India especially, the summers are too hot, and we ha we need to help our wildlife uh, survive because we humans have degraded the environment so much that the poor animals don't get anything. Needed. So we have uh, the forest officials uh, make a lot of artificial water holes. Now this water hole is not Taroba, don't mistake it. This is uh, this is from Badangad, and uh, there is one or two flying uh, saucers like this which is made, which we help the local uh, wildlife to survive. We usually uh, summer is the best time to go. Again, monsoon is also a great time, but uh, the parks are closed. Like you, I've shown you some monsoon photos from Karnataka, how they look. But again, we are left with only the summer and the winter times. Now, here we get some beautiful frames of tigers drinking water. They come sit on the road. They do a head-on. You name it. So it's a little bit more easier when compared. But the only process of the only tedious task over here is getting a proper booking. Because here you have to book the zones. You have the, the zone problem. Uh, gypsy is not a problem. You can get the gypsy of your own. So the way you go about it, over here in central North India, the park ticket opens 120 days in advance. And per zone, you get close to around only 10, 10 gypsies. So Badangat, for example, I would take has got three zones. That is uh, Magdi, Tala, and Kitauli, where Magdi and Tala uh, were considered the premium zones because of the number of sightings they get. But now, And Kitauli was not uh, that much. But now again, Kitauli is picking up. So when people, when somebody wants to book, they have to confirm the booking at least 120, 120, 25 days before. So the payments and all are made. And uh, then 120 days before, at 11 o'clock in the morning, the ticket counters open online. And only 10 tickets per zone. You know, it doesn't even take 30 seconds. All the tickets are sold out on the premium zone. So you have to plan in advance. And because the closer you plan, the more expensive it's going to get. Nowadays, the forest department have introduced this Tatkal system. Where the closer you go, you have to shell out uh, close to 10,000 rupees extra per ticket. Meaning apart from the ticket cost, 10,000 rupees is just a tatkal cost so that you get a safari to do. So please plan ahead. And if you can't do the uh, booking on your own, hire a proper agent or a tour operator or, or, your, or the local uh, safari guides or the drivers who are there. They are the best people to help you around with that. Plus it gives them also an opportunity to earn apart from... Uh, they are taking you around, which they, which is not that much. Sorry, I just take a break. My mouth. I've been talking too much. Huh? So uh, I hope people, uh, you guys, have understood how the safaris in Karnataka differ from Central and North. So Karnataka, you can again just plan maybe one or two months, but here you need 120 days. It's close to around four months. So you get the cliche tiger on the safari track shot. 
again from Badam Ghat. Now, when you're going for a safari in Central and North India, try to understand what you want when going on safari. It's yeah, it's all about the big cats and blah blah blah, all that. But then again, certain parks have certain species. Like Kana has the swamp swamp deer, which is not anywhere else other than in North India. Then uh, like parks like Badungad and all the central areas, they don't have elephants. Well, Badungad has elephants now, which have come in. But otherwise, other than that, they didn't have a, they don't have elephants. And it's bamboo centric. It's like bamboo everywhere. So concentrate, learn more about the park. Uh, ask your friends who've been there. What about plan a proper safari? Go there. There, I believe, a lot of tour operators or a lot of safari outfitters. We go there. We, uh, I mean, after our Reiki trip only, we start selling the packages. So go with the person who you like or you know. Another thing is while on safari, try to challenge yourself in terms of photography. Um, now, this is a completely backlit shot. We could have gone through the other side and got a perfectly exposed shot. No. But create something different, like create your niche. You see, even on this photo, if you see, there are a lot of dust particles in the air or insects which are flying around. It creates a kind of a more mystical type of images. Explore. When the, when the animal's giving you ample time to photograph it, explore. Certain cases, animals don't. And uh, this was on a winter morning when we went. Uh, we had seen uh, tigress on the track walking towards us. On seeing our jeep, she went off inside, so the jeep piled up. We didn't realize there was a male tiger hidden on the other, other on our on our right side. This video had gone famous also by uh, a friend of mine from Facebook, Mr. Ashish, had taken this uh, Jawarkar, I think his name is. He had taken a video where the tiger charged the jeep. Well, I was the jeep ahead of him, and well, seeing a tiger, we always go for the big lens. And uh, somehow I had to make do with the situation. And this lasted hardly not even a second. The tiger charged at the Jeep, went around and went disappeared into the bush. This is the shot you get. So always be prepared while you're on safari because you get very limited amount of time. And I, this is, I have to stress on this point in India. You have only a very limited amount of time to photograph, to get some frames of the animal because you have only a small window. It's not wide open or anything like that. Uh, see, again, a tiger crosses the road. Now, the disadvantage over here I would like to talk about is the number of jeeps which pile up at a sighting when compared to, uh, which happens also on rare occasions in uh, South India, but in Central India uh, have, happens a lot more. And you know, places like Dadoba and all that you have seen, many articles have come out. But then again, it depends. Uh, the drivers of these gypsies also have to show their clients the safaris. But again, if certain at we can follow, we can at least give some space. You can see the number of, one, one of jeeps here. In the sighting, she was so frustrated. Well, that she was she was walking through the forest. She came here. She stood here for a minute or two on the edge of the safari track. She was so frustrated how to go. She just scooted around uh, through the track. In, I mean, in front of us. Another another example: the gypsy coming in the frame. But again, these are good conservation messages which we can share. Give some space between the animals and the wildlife. This is their territory at the end of the day. When vehicles are not there and you're the only vehicle there, you get some crazy images. And I mean, I had to pinch myself when I got this image. I had never got a tiger actually snarling at me. I've taken a lot of images of tiger yawning, which looks like a snarl. But no, this was an actual snarl, which was taken from the Bijrani zone and Jim Corbett National Park. Again, there with limited number of vehicles and the option of staying in the forest helped me a lot, helped us a lot in getting this image. We were the only Jeep over here. And in this, while the Jeep was parked here, we got three different tigers. The, there's one tiger, uh, uh, this one sister was in front, this tiger and the father of these tigers were following them at the back. Indian safaris, you never know what you're going to expect. Another park, Jim Corbett National Park, but uh, it is with these cobblestones, beautiful white cobblestones, marble stones, which you get. And to get a tiger on that was another dream, which happened on my first safari as well. Again, different perspective. And as you can see, the tiger's got some porcupine quills. Something different, which we kept together. So uh, there are a lot of human interactions, again, which happen in Indian safaris. Now, again, uh, our parks are littered with lantana bushes and all these invading plant species. So the forest department is trying their level best. And in this case, uh, this was taken from the Kala zone. Uh, where the forest guys at the back uh, had employed uh, some people to remove the lantana, which this was taken last year. You can imagine, you can see a tiger's walking there. These people are just uh, on the track over there. You can see the amount of guts with these people have got. That shows my respect for these guys. 
and i know that humans and animals can coexist we should not keep taking their territory away corbett is really i mean if you know the parks like i told you before plan your safaris what you want where you go corbett aptly named the land of uh, trumpet and roar you get elephants like crazy here especially this is river ramganga on the famous sambar road which is at the tikala zone next to the forest guest house i'll show you two mode this is the winter mode and i'll show you a summer mode you can see the transformation for yourself so this is a herd of elephants they were coming down for their morning drink the sun was rising and created this beautiful frame the layers you see the foreground middle the background everything is covered and this is the summer time you see the vast difference even the river has completely changed color it is now muddy because of the lot of disturbances which are happening up river uh being summer i would say uh, the closest thing to an african savanna which you can get in india from my experience would be the dikala zones uh, grassland area where uh, the Ram, river ramganga also comes there it's vast open spaces you can see how the elephants enjoy themselves with the water and again this proves my what i said about vast open spaces and elephants the uh, indian forests we get to create some different frames as well like this whole large jungle as i spoken about the nagaroli frame of the elephant here again and if it is such a huge animal you see how it's dwarfed by these large sal trees now the the uh, the building you see far at the back of the frame in the center is the dikala guest house that's where you're staying it's almost uh, 30 to 40 minute drive from the main gate to this guest house you stay inside with a maximum of 3 nights now over here you can't stay more than 3 nights and then you have to move out so know the park where you're going before that safari elephants not only in the grasslands you get them even on the hills of uh, bijrani they are i mean it's a hilly area you get the flats you get the plains it's gorgeous you must i mean like people who visit should visit these parks as well as uh, i mean as well as, as well as other unknown parks which people have not visited like dadwa you have panna you have satpura all these other places as well now here the bull elephant uh, was getting ticked off by this young uh, elephant which kept on uh, creating havoc in the herd so i had to taught him i mean teach him a lesson so shoved him into the forest to teach him a point and go now let's come back to everyone's favorite park a little bit maybe one or two frames i can show you is tadoba national park where uh, again the name tadoba is synonymous with tigers you get tigers left right and center not every time it depends on chance but the frequency is more now this is a very old tiger which was collared people have named him gabbar but i'm going to call him as a tiger but again you see the disadvantage of being uh, in a park like this with the amount of jeeps in the background you have a canter also if you see the center one is a big uh, bus so you have to deal with this if you're going on safari if you want to go see so plan your safaris well plan the season go do don't go during a holiday season where the rush is more plan yourself in uh, when it's a work day don't go during the weekends it's easier on us but if i trust me you'll enjoy a safari is much better during the the weekdays and non holiday days this is a photograph uh, i mean like this trip was a very special trip uh, this is a tiger from kana national park and again you get the gypsy at the background we have to live with it can't do anything about it now this trip is uh, all thanks to make friends wherever you go i have very good friends over here which uh, like to name a few is like sarosh you have uh, nikhil you have kamlesh i mean you go with the guys who know the parks and you're going to have a ball of a time we had taken a road trip uh, and uh, these guys uh, my friends arranged everything and best person to leave it to is sarosh bhai and because of him we got sighting like this i had been to kana before and i and i had done three full day safaris in kana i had not seen a single tiger i went with sarosh on a normal safaris and i saw tigers left right and center plus i got some action of tigers as well now um another tiger centric park which you can focus on which has less undergrowth focus on ranthambo there's no other park where you can get tigers like like crazy you have to leave one tiger to go see the other tiger again go with an apt guide a proper guide your ranthambo is very expensive so plan before save and then go it's worth it at the end of the day and it's got also 10 different zones book in advance Uh, so that you don't splurge more because each ticket ranges around 10 to 12000 rupees are for a normal safari you go in the tatkal system add another 10000 rupees for a normal safari 25000 rupees or more so you know plan well in advance or let an expert book the safari for you uh ranthambo creates unique images because the tigers are how the animals i would say are 
completely tourist friendly they are used to tourists because of the inflow of people coming in and doing safaris you get to see even these tender moments like this where a mother cares to her cub again being vast open areas in ranthambo this was next to the rajbagh lake and all uh, this is arrowhead which is a very famous tigress you even the gypsies over there they allow you to open up the gypsy completely like put the windshield down and all that so best place to take a tiger over there it's a i mean a bokelicious tiger shot the cliche again in india is the head on photograph now here's a little bit story of from ranthambo you get various different terrains across india and ranthambo for one you get plenty of terrains over there you have the uh, marsh area which is called the bokala area which is beautiful then you have these rocks you have the canyon you have the plains so it's nothing this is a story again this a uh, few photographs which i had um which nisha has also given in few exhibitions has come up she's used uh, from the same series she's used the photo on uh, posters so this is krishna and her cubs so this is krishna's cub one he came i mean they are quite tourist friendly as i said we were all parked at this water hole because somebody had already seen them in the canyon walking down safari so jeeps can't go there but with a the binocular you can see it's going there so we waited there again knowing the animal we waited patiently we positioned ourselves because we knew it's a summer time they're going to come down to the water hole well that's what happened after a wait of around half an hour the first cub came posed for us across the rocky terrain and started cooling off in the water while quenching its thirst later on it was joined by its brother uh they also do come out and sit they pose for you a lot now again here giving us a skimpy look like what are you doing up to as i said play around with the frames this was taken at 600 mm uh um, which is my favorite lens because of the bokeh there's nothing else to tell about it and at low light it's a monster go with, even if you drive a little bit closer they don't get scared or anything because they use but again keep your ethic keep your distance between the animal they will give you wonderful frames don't disturb them wait for them to look at you don't try to intimidate the animals or scare them anyway which is unethical which many people do it especially known uh, i won't take any names but known international photographers also had come and messed things up in different parks which is not right you get to see action thanks to sarosh bhai again a tiger in action which was on my list for quite some time and all thanks to him and his planning i would say his company is kind of good luck i'll show you some more frames what i mean but getting a tiger in action was one of i mean is most of our uh, in our uh, list a top list to do or to get because we get tiger sitting we get them sleeping but getting them running or charging hunting or in this case it's a young tiger just jumping around speaking of what uh, national animal we even i uh, let me show you a frame of a peacock otherwise people will say you're all in tiger centric but well here's a peacock welcoming us into the jungle and speaking of a peacock uh, there was an image quite a few years back which made a buzz in the media as well as was the cover photo of century asia magazine i did earn a little bit out of it not much at that time because social media was not a big thing but here it goes here's the peacock tree uh this is basically a dry tree uh, stump which is in the middle of badungar national park uh, badungar tiger reserve and there was a peacock sitting on it and this was the winter time and uh, i had while on track many people ignored the peacock and they just uh, drove off i was coming around the corner i saw the peacock there i saw it lift up its wing a little bit like this i mean the the tail feathers and it put it back down so we waited there for some more time and then again it started pruning itself so when it prunes itself it has to balance to balance it out it opened up the feathers at the back well you see the results right in front of you so this is another if you go with the right guys in the right head this is not a safari this is on the highway on chandrapur highway where i had gone with none other than nikhil uh, and kamlesh who are really good friends of mine and uh, he is he's got some crazy collections thankfully he shared one safari i mean like a drive with us and showed us a leopard well i've got nothing else to say but sarosh altaf nikhil and kamlesh bhai because of their luck i was able to see i had done this before with them but we didn't get to see anything but this time a leopard at night and this was a young leopard uh this leopard's mother had made the news where she had attacked a woman or something and uh, uh, the next day she got hit by a vehicle or something like that so i'm not clear but uh, this was the this was the cub of that female 
uh, in certain cases, similar, similar image, I mean, like the similar leopard, it went into the bush. So we went, we took a parallel service road to see where the leopard went. We stopped at a place and we were come lish by with his hawk eyes and the spotlight was searching the terrain. By the way, Nikhil and Kamlesh help a lot with the forest department. So uh, they are they motivate them and they do this for their research as well. So it is not illegal. We are just joining them on the, uh, on one of their rounds. And uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, what we were doing. I mean, like we this leopard had gone inside. So we were we went to the other side. We were searching. Kamlesh Bhai was searching over there and he spotted the leopard. It was just crossed there right next to the window. And it just only one frame I could get before it ran off into the bush. So leopards, big cats, other animals aside, we get a lot of birds as well. So this is the most common owl which we uh, see next to any water body. This is the brownfish owl, a beautiful specimen. Many people uh, don't get to see it again due, due to its camouflage. But I mean, just scan the forest. You have to be a little bit more attentive. You have to keep your eyes peeled when you're in the forest of India because you never know what you're missing out. They are for sure seeing you, but I can give you a guarantee you will never see them. So this is another rare owl, a spot billy eagle owl. This is a juvenile, which was taken from Corbett National Park. Um, every Tom, Dick and Harry in the park knew this was their the area they knew. So, well, we went and got, a, I mean, went behind this, got the shot of a juvenile because I had got the adult before. Again, it's a very rare bird to get. It's a very big owl. And man, you can see its talents. It's, and those deep black eyes, it's really scary sometimes, especially the call. It, Sounds like the devil is roaming the night or something like that. But a beautiful bird nonetheless. And uh, this has got a story on its own. We knew the owl was there. We were waiting actually for our tigress and our cubs to come out on the small narrow path where they come cross or they sit in the cross bank. So that narrow window, we were waiting and waiting, nothing. But the owl was close by. So we said, again, impatience played, uh, played a role here. We were not patient enough to wait. So we said, uh, instead of waiting, so much spending time. Let's go click that owl and come back. We did the same. We went, clicked that owl, hardly five minutes, came back. We missed the entire show where the mother came out, the cubs, they walked together. The other two jeeps which are waiting there got brilliant shots. It's just a matter of luck. Some people win, some people lose, and you can't get everything. This is the adult version of the spot bitty legal owl, but this was clicked in Bandipur. Uh, this image also uh, was, I mean, shared quite a bit. It was a magazine cover in the US and uh, South America. I mean, it's a crazy bird. They called it the heart bird because of the heart patterns on it. So you can imagine how other people feel about our Indian wildlife when we ourselves don't explore it much. But once we do and share it with the world, it really turns heads. So focus on other things as well, like certain common species in certain parks, which this, this is a black francolin, which we don't get across India or in the North Indian regions. Uh, it's quite common there. So many people don't take it. But I mean, see the frame, which... Uh, one frame which I'm very proud of, and uh, because of the light, it's action, it's not a normal bird. So that says it all. Khalij pheasant, well, you go to North India, especially Corbett, you're bound to get to these you know, beautiful birds. This is a male, and they come quite close. They're used to people, as, as in the case with any tourist-centric wildlife reserve. Again, uh, many many of us like common species like the Indian roller. We keep uh, ignoring it. We avoid it because we keep seeing it again and again. Spend some time with it. You never know what you're going to get. It was again perched. This was taken from Taroba. The bird was perched as usual, screeching away. Uh, we waited for some time to see what it would do or something. It flew right in front of our jeep, came down, took a mud bath right in front of us. Beautiful. I mean, it opens its wings so you can see it play with our colors. You can even target areas like LRK, where this is a, a pallet harrier, and uh, they are quite comfortable. You, are, I mean, there are certain techniques where you can approach the bird closely, park. Uh, the jeep jeep takes you to a certain distance, then after that, get down from the jeep, and you have to do the army crawl, go close, frame your subject. Uh, I mean, you get beautiful frames. Another common bird. This is a jungle fowl. Common uh, jungle fowl or like certain foreigners call it uh, jungle uh, chicken, <laughs> wild chicken. So on a perch, this was taken from Bandipur. Expect the unexpected when you're in India. You will obviously get something unique or something very interesting, apart from the usual sightings which people are fed up of, I would say. This is a white-bellied uh, woodpecker. 
again from Kabini. Usually some people play some myths where they say, if we see a white bellied woodpecker, we'll definitely see a cat or something like that. In my case, it was true. After this, I did see a beautiful tiger. Now, when you go on uh, certain places, especially in Central and North India, you get uh, to stay in some beautiful resorts, which are on the fringes of the forest. Sit there, look around the habitat. You might get to see a few birds like this black nape monarch. I was sitting in the dining hall. And we saw this monarch coming in, it comes, picks up something from the table, goes and perches itself. So we went, got our cameras, and we sat there for the afternoon between the game drives. We got some beautiful perspectives. Now you can see these on the garden uh, rocks, came and perched there. You usually don't see them like this. So always be ready. Even, I mean, you're coming out to a wildlife reserve for this. If you're doing photography, it is for this. Or if you're, I mean, even you're coming to a wildlife reserve, it's for what? To see the wildlife, enjoy nature. Sit out, spend time instead of sitting in your room, watching TV or something like that. Or even we get some angry owls looking at us as what we're doing in the jungle. Uh, certain species, again, keep your eyes peeled. Another rare uh, species which I got in the jungles of South India, though I know I'm talking about Central and North, but again, I had to bring this up here. This is a Leggy's Hawk Eagle, which is quite rare. And was take, this, was, uh, this I had taken on the main road, not even on a safari track. This was on a main road from Nagaroli Tiger Reserve in Kurg. Again, with camouflage, a moated wood owl, which is quite famous in Central and North India. They're quite uh, plenty, but only thing people fail to see them because of they blend in quite well with the trees. Can you? I mean, you can imagine how they are blending into the bark of this tree. <clears throat> now, for the special things as well, uh, we have certain birds. People go specifically to my hometown, which is the Nilgiris. Uh, I have been born and brought up there. I used to see these, I never used to pay attention, but after leaving that place, spending time away from it. I said, I mean, then you come to know when you're missing some, when you have something and you miss it, and then uh, you really come to know the value of it. That's what happened in this case. I went especially with a friend of mine, Azaf Bhai from Dubai. We went there and we targeted few common species. For the locals, it's common. For us, it's not like this uh, red avidavant or rose finch. Even the common oriental white eye. You get them and you get them a plenty but again common birds give you some beautiful frames why to ignore these now another thing is a shaheen falcon which is uh wildlife photographers we are nuts we do some crazy things i was literally on a cliff when we photographed this a small slip and uh, i would have fallen some i don't know kilometers down but it was all well worth it for the for a frame of this bird and then we backed off he said no enough is enough we i mean we just clicked the species and went off so Target plan, you go with a local guide. If you don't know a person, don't go alone. Always be in pairs or have company with you when you're exploring unexplored places without a Jeep, like these special tours. You can even photograph birds and wildlife right out of your home window. This is, see, I'm staying in Bangalore in the heart of the city. We have uh, from the garden from my balcony, this was taken during the COVID thing. I was so frustrated. I just picked up my camera. Whatever I could see, I just I was clicking some flowers, this and all, which are blooming right out of my balcony. This purple rum sunbird came by. I mean, I've never got a photo, a better photo of a purple drum sunbird if I go out into the wild and try to photograph it. This is the female, same plant, I mean, same tree, but you see, it's a little bit of action, something different. Now, this is the urban wildlife which I was talking to you about. Like, we have uh, urban cattle in the Nilgiris. We have the wild gaur, or I would say domesticated gaur with the exclamation. They come... And they've become domesticated in the sense that they are used to people in habitation. So this is in a place called Forest Dale where they just roam around and people keep watching them as spectators. And this is a full-grown bull male girl, which can reach even uh, up to a ton in weight, which are, they are quite dangerous. But they're quite comfortable. You get to get some unique angles and frames with them, which you want to get in a safari jeep. Now, I'll just talk to you about this image. you just taken this image for a sec. Uh, the same girl which I had photographed previously walked walked all down through the path which you can see behind. And uh, we were filming him. But there is a point where you know, okay, you head back, sit in your car and then photograph him. Because before he reached this place, we were sitting, we were there photographing him crossing that uh, tea patch. Don't neglect the small cats. They are beautiful too. Like this a beautiful jungle cat which we photographed from Taroba. Uh, they are quite... Uh, easily, I mean, I would say relatively easily to get in Central and North India when compared to South India. But beautiful. I mean, don't ignore these cats. Don't go only after tigers. Yes, Indian safari is uh, synonymous with being a tiger safari. 
agreed but then again don't in uh, these beautiful cats also have their place in the wild photographing common species gets you certain behaviors which you don't get spend time you know seeing a big bull gore compared to a female gore is uh, in in itself a sighting but then this gore was whistling away because it was uh, mating season so it was whistling away there's a video clip as well of this but again i'm talking about photography so and this is one uh, i mean you see the way the head is tilted up you get to see these behaviors or you see a tusker uh, using his tusks to chip away at the bark of a tree where it gets its calcium or fiber in turn sharpening its uh, ivory as well then you get i mean like in center up certain aspects you get you see a common jackal but then again a jackal with a pea hen a pea fowl or kill it's a it's a different frame altogether so don't neglect the common species another beautiful frame of the most common species in indian forest the spotted deer you see this is a natural interaction which happens which many of us don't miss because the deer are quite uh, skittish of the safari vehicles they look at you they move away they are always on high alert because they are the most they are hunted by leopards they are hunted by wild dog they are hunted by tigers you name it any predator hunts them so they are always wary but it's good to see them in a different uh, perspective or a different frame or a different mood to capture natural behavior that is the end game of a natural wildlife photographer <clears throat> we have some targeted species as well now coming back coming apart from central north india uh, that is different so i hope you guys have understood the safari part of it the animals of it any doubts you can ask me because i'll start talking about uh, endemic species which we get in tamil nadu or i mean even in karnataka we do have them which is the lion tail macaque and all that Are there any questions here, or should I continue? Uh, so far, yeah, we have one. Uh, it's not question. Uh, Kalika Shah, not so lucky. Have been to Rantampur, Corbett, and Bandavgad, and not not even one sighting. Should have gone with you, Nimit. But now you are moving to Masai Mara. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not the case. I'm moving to Masai Mara, but I'm bringing people here to India as well. So I'm, that's a base. This is a base. But apart from that, yes, I do understand your predicament because in the beginning when I used to do safaris across India, I did tell you about my full day safaris in Kanna. Imagine paying sixty thousand rupees per day only for safari and not yeah. seeing a single tiger for three days straight. You can imagine my frustration. But again, <laughs> don't give up. You go. Uh, so when you're going ahead to the uh, to the parks like this, plan again. Do your research to who I mean about the guides. It's not like you go there at the counter. People will come, I and mean, then you go for a safari, come back, no tiger. It's not the mm. case. Rantampur has got plenty of tigers. When the people who, because certain people over there are quite enthusiastic to show you a tiger, though they've seen the tiger for the last fifty years or whatever. But seeing a tiger every day, any time you see a tiger, that feeling which you get, trust me, it will never go away. Even if you are seeing your five thousandth tiger, it will mm. never go. Yeah. so plan ahead go properly uh, consult with uh, people you can always write to me or uh, nisha and harmis they can always also pull in and we can work something out but again plan your safaris in time i yeah. do agree because i have been to badangad also many many times i have gone uh, like in 10 safaris in badang 10 safaris in tadoba i have not seen a single cat this was my first trip to tadoba mm-hmm. way back in 2012 where people were seeing tigers left right and center that was the golden age of tadoba where people in uh, telia lake they used to see all these yeah. sisters and all that the discovery channel had come and they were filming and all that well when i went there the tigers seemed to disappear <laughs> so you can't uh, i mean that's wildlife they are not in a cage we are only uh, predetermined on a safari track they are wild animals so be persistent you will get but then i took it took me almost 13 years to see my first tiger in bandipur which was prince i kept on missing him through the other years so once but one thing i will tell you for sure once you start seeing a tiger it's like your book is open and then you start noting down i've seen tiger here seen tiger there seen tiger there your frequency keeps improving because again you have to know the guy who you're going with he should know how to track the animal he should be motivated enough to do it those were the good days now people you know i don't have to talk about it but many people know what's going on <laughs> sorry yeah and kaliya okay. is in uh, nairobi so we'll get in touch with you Perfect. We'll catch up in Nairobi when I'm there next. Hopefully, when the Indian government opens the flights, I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs> And we have a question from Balakrishna. Which lens you use for birding? 
uh, I'm one of the spoiled brats. So I used to start with the 150, 500 Sigma. I didn't like the quality. Uh, I saved money and I picked up the Nikkor 4 or 600 F4. That's my go-to lens for everything. I'm so used to that lens. I can't do without it. Like certain people have 400 2.8. I say, no, I love the 600 F4 for reasons known only to me because it's based on my experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one more but question. Then, but, but again, yeah. uh, don't, don't limit yourself to thinking that only a prime lens like a Nikon 600, Canon 600, or even a Sony 600 will help you. No, even they are good lenses like the Tamron 150 600, which are quite good. I've seen people getting fantastic results with that. So it depends on what you get and how you approach the bird or the animals. That's it. Uh, one question from Jamin Patel. How you manage misty morning photography? From whom? Jamin Patel. Jamin Bhai, I'll come and tell you Nairobi. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> but uh, just to clarify that, um, misty photography, see, uh, when you're photographing, noise doesn't depend completely on your ISO. It depends on the particles in the environment as well. You have haze, you have uh, humidity. Uh, light gets refracted. Even if you see with your naked eye, you see the waves moving and help. And mist is one of those things which really ticks you off. And like the Black Panther question where I said it's a completely black animal, you have to try and focus on a contrast point, a point between the dark and, a, on, and the light. That's how you can able to capture the images in mist. Try to find it, what's your best, or use manual assist. You can see with your naked eye as well through the viewfinder. Use manual assist, try and give if the animal is giving you ample amount of time. There have been certain instances, but again, if you don't, keep trying. Can't say anything more about that. We are not, the cameras are still not reached to the level of what our eyes can do. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it for this session. Let's go ahead. All right. So uh, now these are special places where you can go for safaris like birding. You can target areas like this is taken from Valparai, a lion tail macaque, which is quite famous. So here they are uh, very well protected. They have their own bodyguards throughout where a guy with the board will say, slow down, you're in uh, their territory. So spend time. I mean, like learn about these animals. They are beautiful animals. I mean, they're unique. You don't see them anymore. They used to be across India, but now they are only comprised in the Western Ghats. So capture the animal, try to capture most of the natural behavior of the animals, not uh, you. I mean, don't try to disturb them. Now, I wouldn't have got this type of frame if the uh, lantern macaque was wary about me. It was raining. Yeah, I mean, leech infested forest Walpare is, but beautiful animals and birds you get there. And uh, this lantern macaque was enjoying the rain, the breeze. I mean, you can make up this kind of a human type in expression. Or also intimidating the young one, like we like to do as well, bully our brothers or whatever. Or as normal monkey drinking water in an unusual <laughs> compromised position. So there are a lot of common subjects. You don't have to see the trees or you don't have to see big cats. We have small small creatures, beautiful creatures like this turtle over here. This was taken in Corbett, by the way. So we would, we, this uh, turtle in uh, actually welcomed us to a trip, which... I mean, gave us a lot of luck with our tigers and we even uh, almost sighted a leopard in Cobbett. <clears throat> so apart from the wildlife, we do come into the macro category as well. Uh, so we have uh, tours specific to macro. You can go to Agumbe, but I like to go home. Again, the Nilgiri is the part of the Western Ghats. We get beautiful, like the starry-eyed bush frog. This was actually photographed right uh, inside my house. Thanks to a friend who had uh, who knows about frogs, he had come. We went. That's how we photographed it. A different perspective, and the frog jumped on a bird of paradise plant. So this is a bird of paradise bulb. You get different perspectives. Again, most of the macro photographies for frogs, snakes happens at night. If you're lucky, you go go to places like Agumbe or Ramboli. You get them in good light. Well, my luck didn't favor me that time. I'm going to go back again because I I came back dry in both these places. This is a common house spider which we get in the Western Ghats. From looking from afar, they look quite big and creepy. But when you look up close, they are creepy, yes. But have you ever noticed colors? The macro world gives you different perspectives. Or even, you know, snakes. Sorry to say, this is not a, this snake was not photographed in India. This was taken in Dubai when we do herping. I have not photographed snakes in India yet. So I wanted to show something. This is a thin saw scale viper, which is very thin and it is 100% lethal. 
very deadly but again with proper techniques and uh, knowing understanding the animal we get we get to get photographs like this we uh, you can even try macro photography using stacking images now this is an image which is stacked with 19 frames it's a different i mean like photography gives you a lot of uh, techniques you have a lot of knowledge you can be a jack of all and a master of one, none or a master of one i mean you know the phrase but then again this is you i used an artificial background this is a common house fly which we all say uh, try to swat away but again you look closer you can see the compound eyes you can see how much i mean they are an organism in itself they are a life in itself so it just gives you a different perspective try to understand the natural world i spoke a lot about india i know uh, nisha and her uh, nisha especially told me a lot of people spoke about africa but then again when i do a presentation i have to talk about a glimpse of africa now the difference between india and doing a safari in india and africa is india is quite difficult so people are the muscle memory of people picking up cameras to photograph an animal is quite quicker but then again in kenya you can uh, learn much more people who learn from india and then go to kenya and photograph will get, definitely get fantastic images but it's the other way around which will help photographers improve easier and better the, i mean in a shorter span of time and compared to india is because you get a lot of animals in kenya i mean and not in kenya per se in africa the savannas are vast there's a lot of, a lot to do so like this for example seeing baby leopards playing around uh, in an open savanna i mean you can't dream of it in india but then again <laughs> in kenya it's like oh this cub this leopard has cubs let's go stay the whole day you get something go there you stay the whole thing now these two are the progeny this was taken in uh, 2017 december this is the progeny of uh, the famous famous leopard called kaboso so i just wanted to bring that up to show you you get a lot of action in uh, africa now cheetah chase and the kill then you get different in the rain i mean you can experiment a lot now in india the rain animal takes runs for cover they don't come out in the open but here in kenya they've got no way to hide so you get different different frames now this is malaika and her two boys unfortunately this was a last litter after this while crossing the river she perished because the cubs uh, cubs didn't let her go so she had she was quite frustrated she left and demise but again you get such creative frames being an indian photographer we always photograph in low light well low light helps us here there's hardly any light here with heavy downpour of rain you get a lot of ac action this is off season migration which happened in january can you believe it or not but uh, staying in the right place like uh, places especially on the longs of any river like mara or the uh, talek river um, you never know what might happen because there are crocs everywhere and these crocs are massive so we were at camp the zebra were coming in we saw them herding across we went out and the jeep sat there and waited for them they crossed and we got action but again the crocs have to suffer. Uh, the crocs too get uh, punched or kicked so it's a win win or lose lose as well now this croc uh, the croc tried to uh, jump on the zebra but the zebra had other plans it hugged the croc saying thank you again try again next time and moved on thank you Hermes, Nisha, I hope that was okay. That was yes. amazing. So you took us throughout Wonderful. India. <laughs> I did try to do as much as I could. That's right. I wanted to put more, but then again, I thought the time constraint uh, shouldn't uh, pull no, up. It was, it was amazing. I mean, but I hope it, well, I hope it covered the general thing about how yeah. the far India is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the whole point. We have a uh, question. Do you use shutter priority or aperture priority? I use both. Uh, predominantly, I use uh, aperture priority. I can tell you the reason why for it, why I don't use manual. You're in wildlife photography. You have a split second to photograph anything. Do Are you telling me that uh, your finger or you can change the settings faster than the animal moves over there? <laughs> Come on, professional great cameras, the camera companies are giving you that feature for a reason. Use it. make your life as easy as possible there's no harm in telling people i use uh, aperture priority which is a semi automatic mode by the way there's no harm in telling people as long as you get your shot if you trust me when you use these modes your keep rate is going to increase using manual mode yeah you can do the artistic photos this that and all but are you content with that i mean are you quick enough for that i doubt it because the light changes 
you have to be quick for that so shutter ap aperture i use 90% of the time shutter in few cases like to do the artistic images especially in uh, places like africa where the light is uniform in india it is not every inch of the forest floor or the tree canopy is different different metering also i hope that answers yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, which light source you use for the night shoot of that leopard oh that was uh, nikhil bhai and kamlesh have uh, a spotlight system which again they use in kruger national park in south africa and all that you know those big spotlights yeah uh, the soft ones not the harsh ones yeah yeah so they use that which is plugged to the power of the car and then they use that so that was a light source they were and um, wanted to share something here we were not in a safari vehicle when we clicked that i was lying down on the road when i clicked that photograph of that <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> you're giving wrong idea sorry <laughs> well those are the uh, steps we wildlife photographers go for to get some different images if i was in the jeep i would have got the red eye or the you know Correct. the light reflect so the light have light has to be 45 degrees away from you that's when you can get the eyes of the leopard like how i got otherwise it's not possible i learned it the hard way when i was in bera so that's what got the technique here so mal krishna is saying my niece gata like all these photographs she said thank you to thank you very much really appreciate it a lot of lot of uh, comments we are getting a um, uh, very amazing presentation india to africa to dubai Well, amazing Dubai, I will do next time. I have a that's a whole set of things. Yeah. Even the initial we'll election of. But uh, I just have to India a little bit te teaser for Africa. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. And I think uh, the light source. Yeah, we we kind of ad address almost all the questions yes. so far. Yeah. So uh, good luck with your uh, African uh, project. Yes, it's it's going to be. i'm sure you know it's it's like living your dream that it, it's being that, that has been my dream and uh, i mean i don't know what i have done to get a contact like munir but thanks to him at my ride in safari camp i mean african uh, guiding team that they had trust in me and uh, during the stuff time they made the decision and pulled me yeah, over that's great that's great so i see you i see you guys there as well I mean, sure yeah Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there. So waiting. Yeah, it's been we we had to cancel three trips this year. So oh, tell me about it. I had six trips cancelled within a span of one month. Ah, we um, thankfully yeah. it was only three trips for us. In fact, we are getting a lot of inquiries, and I'm re I really don't know what to tell people because we don't know when it is going to open, when it is going to be back. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, but I'm, I have absolutely no idea whether November is going to happen or not. So I'm a bit scared to send it across, send send the thing to people. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can't say until, uh, especially people from countries like us, where the flights are not opened up. Yeah, it's a tricky situation. Yeah, yeah. But uh, fingers crossed. Hope bubble flights open up. We'll go also in a bubble. We're not that suit. <laughs> 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 yeah it's, yeah there is one more question i think hear me um about uh, we, have, we have a question about your uh, camera what, what is your gears uh i am a nikon nps uh, user and predominantly in the begin form start to finish i've used nikon it's not the brand that i just picked up nikon and i stuck with them they rewarded me with an nps uh, thing a few years back and okay. i'm still loyal to them That's so great. If you want a specific uh, thing, I'm I use the uh, flagship gear of Nikon, the D6, the D5, Nikon 500, 70, 200, 24, 70, 14, 24. There is always this Nikon, Canon, Sony war. I mean, it's we we it doesn't, doesn't, see, it doesn't it, matter. It doesn't a camera, matter. A camera is just a mechanical object which the photographer takes a picture of. It depends on the photographer what settings he's going to use or. he should understand his gear and at the end of the day do it all the camera brands are good i've used yeah. sony i've used i've used canon a lot especially the 1dx mark 3 and 2 in the way yeah. must It's say every every camera has its place it's just a brand at yeah. the end of the day the gadget is the same and yeah it's it, it it's a combination of at the way you see it and the way you project it and you know you the play you know, the, the way you know the equipment matters the most because then you can envision whatever you want yeah, yeah. 
forget cameras mobile phones people are taking such jaw dropping photos amazing pictures yeah you know like i mentioned in my presentation mobile photographers get every get the best deal out of any safari <laughs> i think we should learn we should get some uh, mobile phone mobile start yeah we'll position don't move don't shake and <laughs> Yeah, I think there is one more question uh, from. Uh, no, I think you, we have covered almost everything. I yeah. know. Uh, have you have your photos uh, published in international magazines? A lot. Yes, they yeah. have. Uh, I uh, another. I think somebody was mentioning it to me that day about the awards and all. I don't put my photos in any awards. I. It, i lose the charm of being a wildlife photographer that way see i am not a facebook photographer or a social media photographer who does it for the likes or the you know followers or the shares i just keep posting and organically keep growing that's uh, apart from the point but then again competitions you know when certain people get some like some people uh, in nif two years back had posted a photograph of these elephants running and people are throwing fireballs at them to scare the elephants away now if somebody is winning an award for that type of photo saying it's a conservation photography competition what do you think the next person is going to do it, you know there is one, there are there is two they are, they are going to, they are going to torture the animal to get photos like that why do you think they, i had mentioned some international photographers coming into ranthambore and all that they come on full day yes they are paid for and everything but the way they harass the tiger by throwing stones on the tiger what? to get that expression yeah it has it has happened i'm not going to name who it is many people know about it but i don't want to be that way you know i that's why i don't have many action photos my i got well, most of my action photos are from kenya because that's what happens you guys know how the action is yeah. crazy that it's open but you should limit yourself there is i mean you're protecting the environment you're there for a certain reason you you want to enjoy the environment first don't do it for somebody else to say photograph for no, yourself at least state or something like that is definitely not right you know no, no, it's not right. disturbing an animal for your shot definitely not good but you know when no. you project the cruelty against animals personally i try to avoid those uh, shots and i try to look at the beautiful ones but there are people if we can use it on education purpose you know images like this not to do things like this not for our no, not to do that. this way don't give an award for a person like that uh, i mean that was, that's my say I uh, no but that. then again it is <clears throat> i i understand your point but i don't think he created it he was he happened to be there and yeah, you know he agree, agree, it. but i'm not talking about that point i'm talking about the point what yeah. that message conveys yeah yeah, yeah. so good uh, i mean like you can appreciate the photographer for taking a photo like that bringing that information out to the world which many people are doing it now yes you know where the uh, so that should be the way how can people do something like that to then again yeah they you know about birds what hunters do they use the bird call to get it it disturbs their routine the nesting of birds one biggest myth across the whole globe you photograph a bird's nest oh don't put that in any competition this that now why because yeah. there's a reason for that people go the birds build their nests in certain locations where they are hiding it from the predators the yeah. bigger birds you go and they clip it just for the perfect photo come on that's, imagine somebody does that for your house what are you going to do then that's that's very sad i mean i think humans are the only species who can go this cruel in yeah, the whole we, planet we are the virus on this planet no the <laughs> <laughs> problem yeah there are there are good viruses there are bad viruses so can't help it that's a problem Yeah, okay. on that note, it was. I mean, see the whole experience and your whole point of view, everything from the criticism side to the journey uh, to the photos to the technique. It was a fabulous one and a half hours. I must say, you know, thanks. Oh, we'll come back. Okay. okay, so my calculation was right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was beautiful. It was every yeah. every comment, everything was awesome. Thank you again for the opportunity. We'll come back with some other location from you. Yes, son. That like, time I'll be okay. live. There I can talk much more. I can yeah, you more. know, once you once you move completely to Africa, then we can put one specifically for Africa with maybe after a year with more images, new steps, new stories. Maybe live from the African wilderness. Yes. Yeah. Done. Done. Yeah. <laughs> done. In fact, I am. I am also. I will be also starting to take videos. Yeah. So uh, we Great. can always do a lot of stuff there. Yeah. So catch you guys there then. 
either the yeah. way or yeah. 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 yeah yeah thanks again for the opportunity thank you so much thank you so that was Nimit and uh, some spectacular imagery and awesome briefing and uh, experience sharing and his views on conservation photography. So we, you know, we all have different opinion on different things. So that was a reflection of the thoughts. Yes, it does make sense in a way. And uh, but then you definitely people definitely need to understand what is happening across the world and creating a frame like that for an hour definitely is not something which i haven't even thought in that angle how can people go that crazy so it's a different point of view and help me yeah uh what's next for the next uh, next uh next it's going to be second second of um, second of september is going to be by peter hudson he is going to talk about hornbills yeah, Indian Great yeah. Hornbill. We have a magazine getting published on 1st of September. Yes. This edition is all about Indian Great Indian Hornbill. Great Indian Hornbill. We have got a lot of pictures from... Oh my God, some pictures are like, you know, from uh, f everything. Uh, from mating to the chicks to the feeding to the um, the, the flight, the habitat, the portrait, the close-ups. Um, thank you so much for all of you for this kind of. I have never seen a mating shot of a yeah, shot. habitat shots are like awesome. Fabulous habitat. You feel like you are inside the forest, and there are there is one particular photographer. He puts a very artistic approach. It's a, a edited beautifully edited artistic uh, uh, photos too. So you see a different variety in photography as well as editing approach too. So keep. Uh, keep watch. I mean, uh, it's going to be PT aware. It's going to be published on the first of uh, September. Yeah. And, we will be updating it on the Instagram and Facebook. Instagram. Yes. This yes. live. Yeah. So that's all for today. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thank yeah. you, guys. Same time with uh, a new story. And this time it's going to be by a scientist. So you learn the facts as facts. And uh, he's a photographer, come scientist. Okay. All right, on that note, please stay safe.